This is uh, Kurt from Madison Mapo. On my left is Tom. On my right, Lou and Jim. We are going to be led in discussion by Lou of uh, the poem Anecdote of the Jar by Wallace Stevens. Okay. A uh, very short poem, very uh, contrasting to the previous poem we uh, discussed. That being uh, Lou, uh, Lawrence Berlinghetti's yeah. Dog. Okay. Anecdote of the Jar by Wallace Stevens. I placed a jar in Tennessee, and round it was, upon a hill, it made the slovenly wilderness surround that hill. The wilderness rose up to it, and sprawled around, no longer wild. The jar was round upon the ground, and tall and of a port in air. It took dominion everywhere. The jar was gray and bare, it did not give a bird or bush like nothing else in Tennessee. So this poem, <laughs> what is it? Uh, I think it's an enigma. I don't know, I don't know, I read some things about it, but I don't think anybody knows why he wrote it. But uh, nothing in this poem is pretty or uh, beautiful in any way. The jar uh, is just a jar, and it's an ugly jar. And it says, he, I placed it. So it was, you know, it was very personal in the sense that, uh, you know, he, he had some reason for writing this poem, but I don't think anybody knows what the reason was. Anyway, my final thing about the whole thing is it's an ex existential poem. Tennessee was a chaos. And then he put a, uh, a human-made object into it, and that organized it. And before it was chaos, and after he put that down, it was no longer a wilderness. It was organized. Uh, the other thing about the jar I noticed was that it was open. And he didn't use the word open, he used port. And a port is something you can go into or out of. So things could go into that jar, but things could come out of it. And it was, it was open. Uh, and that's about all I can say about it. It's a new one. I would say on the, I, like, I very much like the poem. I like it quite a bit. But I, I found his reference to the jar seems to be that what he was playing on the hill was like something knowledge. Yeah. And I think and I, I think that's what he's referring to. You can refer to it as power, or you can refer to it as knowledge. And basically he puts it on a hill, and I think in the second line where he says, and round it was, it was perfect. I look at that as being perfect, because something that's round in some respects, in some ways, is perfect. And it made the wilderness come to it and surround the hill to see what it, what what it was that was up on the hill, or what is this knowledge that's up on the hill. Mm. And, and that's how took, I get. And it took dominion everywhere. It took over because, of course, knowledge takes over because what it, what was was basically chaos <coughs> and unknowledge. Mm. But the way he describes it, uh, you know, it's not a, a picture. It, you know, water pitcher. It's not an ornate vase. It's just, you know, a goddamn mason jar. jar. And it was an ugly jar. He's, he says it's an ugly jar. It was, what, how does, what is it the here? There There's really a, was a jar um, that was available. I guess it was produced in Canada. It was gray and fair. It was nothing, nothing uh, remarkable about the jar at all. It was ugly. But the, com the company Dominion produced a jar um, that was available in Tennessee uh, that may have sparked his imagination of this. Um, and you notice the word dominion appears in, in the poem. Good good dominion point. everywhere. Good good point. Point. Um, and this, uh, it's a funny reference. Um, it, it may also, and I don't know either for sure, but not simply knowledge and ignorance, but uh, 
modernity and uh, advanced uh, production and, and uh, urban life versus the less advanced and the more rural agricultural. The more chaotic and less I don't know if it's so much chaos, but just uh, a more primitive economy and society. Well, completely unorganized. It was yeah. wilderness. I took, Until the oh, I mean, when you talk about the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. I took this as um, Stevens just, uh, talking about the imagination. That um, I don't think he, you know, went out someplace and physically, in reality, placed no. a jar. No. So this is this is an imaginative act, and that once, and by doing so, there's this transformative power. That the jar has, so it's it's lost its utility in this place in Tennessee. It's no longer acting or used as a jar, but instead it's sort of like um, Champ's urinal in the Armory show, where Champ you know signed a name to it and proclaimed that the urinal is a work of art. Well, suddenly you have this jar. Um, I think doing the, the same thing. Um, and so there it is, and it immediately transforms the perception of what's around it. Um, and so it was on, on a hill, made the slovenly wilderness. It made the wilderness, um, you know, look slovenly. Um, the wilderness rose up to it, sprawled around. And again, the transformative effect, no longer wild. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is a, sort of an offtake of your, your sense of the jar as knowledge. And I, I'm, I'm going with, I don't know if it's a refinement, but it's, it, well, it is uh, one approach. So the jar was round upon the ground. Um, and that rhymes nice. Yeah, well, and then there's also another rhyme there nice. is, which I think you mentioned, you know, air everywhere. Um, I think there are a couple others buried in there. Uh, air everywhere, bear. Uh, he just tucks them in really nicely. Yeah, the rhymes are very pretty. They're not much steam to them, but uh, they're, and they're very simple, very, very simple. And this jar, by its presence, which I, again, take as an act of imagination, it has such power that it uh, takes dominion everywhere. Is he talking about the nature of, of capitalism in the, in the early 20th century, where manufacture mm. is, is taking over? Nature. Sure, this is because a human artifact and a really simple, dumb one, an ugly one. Mm -hmm. But that alone is capable of completely transforming the wilderness. And what does capitalism do? Commodification. Yeah. You see, he refers to like the, the, the wilderness is no longer wild. What around it is no longer wild. It's been transformed by whatever, whatever the uh, jar is supposed to represent. Yeah, I would say, 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 I think what, what's also very telling is on the last stanza, the middle two lines, the jar was gray and bare. I mean, the jar had no intrinsic beauty. Right. It was just knowledge or it represented something. And it's also interesting to say the next line says, it, give, it did not give bird or bush. And I look at that as it didn't give back. It was just knowledge without, it didn't return beauty or life back. It was just knowledge. So, and I think, going with my imagination theme, and again, I can respect, and I think there are several valid interpretations sure. of this poem. Oh, yes. um, as Stevens wrote about the imagination, my final point then is that the imagination is the power that enables us to perceive the normal in the abnormal, the opposite of chaos and chaos. And I think the ima this jar is working like the imagination. Um, to, and it's perceiving and creates a, a normality in what is otherwise the wilderness, you know, which I 
so that would be the yeah, well, abnormal. Nothing redeeming in the jar that I can see, except it's a human artifact. And it has this transformative power. Yeah. You know, because every, things, our, our perception of things around the jar changes. And he made a specific point to say that there was no life in this jar. No. There are two categories of life on this earth. And one is animal and one is vegetable. And this he specifically said, this had no life at all. Uh, which I thought was striking. The other things I thought were striking about it was the slovenly, the use of slovenly. You know, a man who uses words to live by, who's, who's superb in the use of words, uh, why, he, he picked slovenly, which was pretty mean. The slovenly wilderness, he could have said a lot of other things about the wilderness. But slovenly is not a nice word. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's one of the less nice words in the English language. Slatterly, slovenly, those kind of things are very demeaning. So, why did he use that word? That struck me. I mean, Capitalism and he knew uses words. those resources to great ends. Finally. Yeah. You know, uh, you brought up, Tom, the it did not give a bird or bush. And so I went, you know, I went to the dictionary and tried to look up the different meanings of give because it's just, you know, what does it mean to give of something? Yeah. And among the definitions that sort of work here, this different senses of the word give. Um, is it, doesn't it mean emit? Uh, it could mean bestow, communicate, or impart. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, what does it impart? Does it communicate? It does not communicate a bird or bush. It does not impart bird or bush. Um, Which impart wilderness. Bird and bush are forms of life. Yeah. Yes. And this did not. It's not life. Giving. It did not reflect any kind of life. It was a completely inanimate object. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. I'm struck by the fact that you know this is void of people, except for the very first I, place in jar. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that happens in this poem. I mean, it's, it's sort of a description of the effects of placing the jar, but it's not really you know, I did this, I did that kind of poem. Um, it did not give a bird or bush like nothing else in Tennessee. So Tennessee only gives a bird or bush. Wilderness. It's wilderness with all kinds of yeah, living things. Primitive things. manufacturing, industry, whatever. So we're slamming Tennessee here? Not really. No, I don't think we're slamming Tennessee. I don't think so. Slamming uh, technology or advancement and that, it, that leaves things out. This is a wasteland. And the only thing redeeming about it is, is that there's a human artifact in it. Otherwise, it's... Or you can turn around the other way and say the only bad thing in it, in a really great wilderness, a pretty beautiful wilderness, exactly. untouched, and then you put this damn ugly jar in it. Like a tin can you find yeah. when you're walking yeah. out in the woods. Right. right. I mean, it could be looked at either way. That's right. Yeah. Well, so we have uh, the jar's knowledge. The jar, uh, the placement of the jar as an act of imagination. And we have capitalism and commodification. And we have the wasteland um, as a possible way of looking at this poem. Did I miss any other ways that we've talked about it before we look at this poem? Yeah, the word court is. Uh, Interesting to me too, but you, I, you raised that. Doesn't it just mean a wide mouth jar? Well, Could be, or a port in the sea. A port, port is some place you can go in, you can go out, you can get refuge in a port. You can, you out can, can go in and get out of the storms in a port. A strange use of that word uh, for something as simple as a double glass jar. Uh, 
The only picture I came across with this is a ball jar sitting, you know, sitting on a stand or something, and they reference that as the jar he was talking about. Used extensively in Tennessee because people would uh, can things. Can things. Sure. But I, I do think it was this Dominion jar. That, mm -hmm. um, well, maybe. I didn't well, know that. But that what is the purpose of the Dominion jar? Oh. For canning? Dominion glass. Mm -hmm. That would be its normal purpose. There you go. Back to what we said. But it's not doing that here. It's having some other transformative effect. There, there are no peaches canned in this jar. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. it's empty. Label, what I, about? I read online different uh, interpretations of it. And even all the interpretations says it can be interpreted many different ways. Yeah. The jar can represent many different things. And it is. The various groups look at it differently. Yeah. What about the, the cliche, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush? Oh, that's a good point. You know, <laughs> bird or bush? I didn't think about that. Oh, you know, I, Jim, I think you really came up with That's a good one. Did I give up? I just thought of the two kingdoms of life. Yeah. You know, animal kingdom and vegetable kingdom. And he, he got both of them in there. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And he's saying, and he didn't give either. <laughs> but if this is an imaginative act of placing the jar in, you know, in Tennessee, in his mind, um, the last line is literally true. There, there is nothing like this in reality in Tennessee. Um, but well, what does that mean? Does it mean that? This had no life, so that Tennessee must be full of life. Well, it was full of bush and bird. Yeah. Yeah. It's full of wilderness. There's a lot of life there. A great deal of life. But where he put the jar didn't have any of that. Well, but the, the, the wilderness surrounded it. Did. And came up to it. And it did have all Yes. Of yeah. Well, the, there's that contrast. The, you know, immediately before that, the jar was gray and bare. Next line, it did not give a bird or bush. Right. So, um, in, in contrast to the jar, which is just gray and bare, and it doesn't have a bird or bush. It's just gray and bare. Yeah. But everything else around it did. Yes. Like nothing else in Tennessee. There you go. Anyone think of a rhyme for Tennessee? I think that would be pretty tough. But you have to say it right. Tennessee. 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 Well, he rhymed it. He just he found a rhyme. rhyme. Yeah. At the beginning of the end. Yeah. <laughs> it does do really um, sandwich it. Yeah. You close it. Yes. Yeah. Just like it being put in a jar. You yeah. know, it just. That's right. There it is. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of that. That's right. It's, in, it's, it's a poem in a jar. Because it's, it's contained. Yeah, it is. Hmm. But why slovenly? Why is the wilderness slovenly? Well, I looked it, it, it's word. a value judgment the jar would make about the wilderness. Not, <laughs> not an objective comment about the wilderness. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have said tangled. He could have said, you know, mm -hmm. lots of prettier words. No, we take that, we take that iron ore wild space and turn it into an automobile. Someone could look at the wilderness and treat it as, you know, look at it as slovenly. You know, getting back to that yes. idea of commodification. Right, yes, but when I'm in the wilderness, I don't feel that it's slovenly. It's a lot of things. Right. It can be beautiful, it can be dangerous. Yeah. I think there's more to this than... than Tennessee would? And yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think there's more to it. Well, it's slovenly wilderness, and it also sprawls in the next stanza. Also not a great word. No. Yeah, but what do cities do? They sprawl. Cities sprawl. Yes. They take up the wilderness. Well, and once the wilderness, at that point, it's no longer wild. It's That's sprawled right. around. Yeah. But it all comes back to the transformative power of the jar. Mm 